Hey, so if you're watching this video, chances are you came from either TikTok, Facebook, or any other social media platforms, or maybe you're just curious to know or to understand the answer to this question. What exactly does it take to make sure that I get to heaven? What am I missing so when I die, I can live in eternity with God forever? How can I make sure that I do not go to hell, but I experience love and joy? Maybe you're just looking for some direct, straightforward answer from God, and you needed a sign from him to confirm the truth about going to heaven. So if any of these things apply to you, I'm just here to tell you and be very precise. This is your sign from God. So before we get into that, I wanted to get into this. I remember about 15 years ago when I was a teenager, I really hated God. I was extremely angry with him for the things that happened to me in my life. I rebelled against him for what I was going through in my life because after all, if God truly loved me, why am I going through all of this stuff? My mother is a devout Christian and most importantly, she was what people call a prayer warrior. So a prayer warrior is a person who always prays to the Lord about any problem and situation. And in most cases, they see their answers come to pass. So a prayer warrior is just a term that we use for people who constantly love to pray and to see God's face. Everything with her was either one or two things. It was church and prayer, or it was prayer and church. And though I thought in my mind that she's doing too much, it was because of her diligence spiritually to pray for me consistently that helped to save my life. So here's how it happened. One Wednesday, I'll never forget it. It was January 28th, 2009. My mom asked me to come with her to a midweek service, a church that she went to out here in Atlanta. Now, I never was a person that constantly went to church or anything like that. But because my mom asked me, I just wanted to just say, you know what? I'll go along with her. You ain't going to do no harm just to go to church, right? So the craziest thing happened. That day, the senior pastor of the church was not there. It actually was the assistant pastor. The senior pastor went on vacation. So this is a midweek service. It was a Wednesday. And the pastor said, he went through the message, whatever. I don't remember anything he was talking about. I was just thinking about just getting out of, getting out of there and going about my business. But I remember at the end of the service, he said, did the altar call and nobody came. So he was getting ready to close down the altar call. But for some reason, he didn't. And this is where what the Bible calls word of knowledge kicked in. Where it's that you know something about someone's past and present supernaturally. He said there's a man here, a young man, who's looking to turn his life over to drugs. You've been hurt, you've been abused, you've been broken. And he just started to just spill out everything that I pretty much went through in my life. So I was like, wait, hold on a second. So I looked over to my mother. And she was sitting there crying because there's no way this guy would have known this information. I never spoke to him in my life. When he said that to me, I felt like something in my heart unlocked. And I was like, nah, like this is, this is not normal. It was, I, I felt like something touched me. So when he gave the altar call, I don't even remember to be honest how I even got up to the altar. I just remember just standing there. It was just me. And at the time was a girl I was talking to. And I remember that I put my arms out like this and I closed my eyes. And there was something of like this cool rushing breeze that, you know, when you stand out on the beach and you feel that really cool breeze, imagine that breeze touching your internal organs. Like that's what I felt. And I was standing there and I knew from that moment that everything in my life would never be the same. So what happened was at that moment, I became born again. I received eternal life. And the Bible says when you receive eternal life, you are changed and you become born again. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17 says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. So that word creation actually means that it's a founding of a new city. You ready for this? So this is what God is saying. When you receive the gift of salvation and you become born again, God plants enough power in you God plants enough identity in you and God plants enough potential in you that will help you to become like a city of people all inside of one man. That's how strong you become. You become stronger than you ever been. You then become a citizen of heaven. All of heaven's resources are now at your disposal. But here's the best part. You become God's child, specifically the king's son or the king's daughter. The old you was done away with as far as God is concerned. So your past sins, your past mistakes, 
God doesn't remember any of it when you repent. And the new you has the entire nation of heaven in the spirit that is backing you. You have armies now at your command. You now have power at your command. All your sins are washed away in the blood of Jesus so you can be clean before God. So now no one can accuse you of doing anything wrong. Are you following me so far? So all the things that you have done in the past that you feel shame about, that you remember, that you would never tell anyone, the Bible says God doesn't remember them anymore after you repent and neither shall you. So when you become born again, there is nothing for you to be afraid of because the devil nor his demons or evil spirits have any power to harm you anymore. And everything that is good in life now becomes your inheritance. You become totally full of peace and joy and you get a happiness that no one can take away from you because it's eternal. It comes from God. So now we get to the question. I had to give you all of that to let you know what takes place when you give your life to Christ. But the question is, how do I become born again? And how do I enter into heaven before I die? Number one, you must have faith. Hebrews 11:6 6 says, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. For those that come to God must believe that he is whatever you need for him to be and that he will reward you for diligently seeking him. Number two, you must believe in your heart and say it out loud. You must openly declare your faith and belief in Christ and your willingness to give up your own life so you can have God's kind of life for you. So what does this mean? You give up death so you can receive life. You give up the flesh or sin so you can experience the spirit of God and holiness. You choose to give up struggling in life so you can receive success. Prosperity over poverty and health over sickness, healthy relationships over broken relationships, you name it. You have to remember that your words carry enough power to rewrite your destiny and to pull yourself out of spiritual prisons so you can enter into the palace of heaven. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Why? For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you have to believe in your heart and confess openly with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. And number three, you must repent of your sins. First John 1, 8 and 9 says, if we claim that we have no sin, we are fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But the second verse is key. But if we confess our sins to him, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. But not only that, but to cleanse you of all wickedness and unrighteousness. The word repent means to change one's mind or purpose. It means to change the inner man, to change your spirit, to change your mind and your subconscious mind from your will to receive the will of God for your life. So why is this important to you and to God? Because repentance of sin means you're willing to turn away from the things that you have done wrong to walk with God for the rest of your life. Though sin feels good for a season, sin is a trap and will pay you with death later. So whether it's physical, spiritual, or to any other aspect of your life. But when you repent, it shows that you're willing to partner with the Father so you can fulfill your destiny. Do you see the two dynamics here? I'm taking a moment to do a mini teaching before this so you can know the truth and nobody can trick you out of it, even if this person calls themselves a pastor. This makes sense? So now that you have those three keys, one, to have faith, two, to confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior from your heart, and you're going to repent, here is the moment that all of heaven has been waiting for, the invitation for you to enter into the family of God. If you heard this message I just shared with you and you are saying in your heart, I believe and I want to be sure that I go to heaven, I want to pray this prayer with you and I ask you to repeat it with me and say it from the depth of your heart and listen to me. Heaven is a witness of this today. If you believe this prayer from your heart, when you say it, right wherever you are around the world, you will become born again. You'll be transferred from the kingdom of darkness 
to the kingdom of light. You will go from death to life and the power of Satan will be broken off of you. So now you can learn to serve the true and living God. Your life will never be the same. Are you ready? So just lift up your hands and bow your head for a moment and just repeat after me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the gift of eternal life. You said if I confess my sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. So I confess all of my sins right now and I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I confess him as my Lord. I openly make a declaration of my faith and I thank him for dying for my sins. I thank you that by the blood of Jesus, my sins are washed away. And because of my confession and belief, I am now born again. I am now a child of God. And I have now have been given the strength to have dominion over sin, to serve you all the days of my life. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. And thank you for allowing me to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I give you praise that I'm born again in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, amen. So if you said that prayer for the first time, just want to congratulate you. You are now a member of the kingdom of heaven. Now I'm going to share these things as we rejoice. All of heaven is rejoicing right now. But I want to share something very important with you. This is just the starting point. Your life, the transformation of your life is going to be ongoing. Now that you have been saved and have been born again, don't let anyone or even your own mind remind you of the things that you have done wrong in the past. The Bible says that God will forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So don't let anyone remind you of the person you were before. And don't believe that you are the mistakes that you've made before because God has forgiven you and has cleansed you. The second thing I wanted to share is that your journey starts now. You must find yourself a local church that is word based, that preaches the word of faith so you can be able to know what God's word says for yourself. I encourage you to also study the word of God on your own. Find yourself a Bible, a good translation, the NLT. The NLT version is a good translation for you to read because it's easier to understand. When you find yourself a good local church that preaches the word of God and encourages you to spend time with God on your own, and then you found yourself this translation, spend time with God daily. I will encourage you to spend time with him in the morning. Take a moment to spend time with him in the morning to pray and also to read the word. Because the more you read your word is the more you start to become transformed. Also know that the power of sin has been broken. If you make a mistake, just repent, ask God for forgiveness for the mistake that you've made. Your mistakes, once you're born again and you follow the Lord and you believe him and trust him, your death sentence from going to hell has been revoked. You're not going to hell anymore. I'll continue to just give you more teachings and more things that can help you along with your journey. I will also encourage you to subscribe to this page as I'll consistently put up teachings to help you to understand your identity as the heir to God's throne and also to help you to understand how to read and study the Bible. So again, congratulations. You are now a member of heaven and you are now a member of the greatest army the world has ever seen. I look forward to see what God is going to do in your life. If this is the first time you have prayed this prayer, write down in the comments that I have said this prayer and I have received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So God bless you and welcome to the kingdom of God. Look forward to great things because God has a phenomenal plan for your life. God bless you.